वेलकम टू म्यूजिकल म्यूसिंग्स द रीजन आई स्टार्टेड दिस सीरीज इज टू अंडरस्टैंड द जर्नी ऑफ डिफरेंट आर्टिस्ट इन द म्यूजिक फील्ड वी नॉर्मली attend concerts for 2 hours 3 hours whatever it is and come back with a good music but what has transpired behind such good music is normally not known to the audience and even the communication and conversation between artists have reduced a lot because of various reasons including the paucity of time so i thought that i should start something and do some constructive conversation with different artists and understand their journey in the music field also how they interpret the music as it is said it is called khayal khayal means the one's own interpretation one's own thinking so taking all this into account i thought i should start something like this where i can have conversations with different different musicians so i thank all of you for joining me and today's guest as you know is pandit sudhir naik one of the foremost harmonium players of our country a great human being a wonderful friend of mine and i will now invite him for this conversation welcome to musical musings इनफॉर्मल चैट it might not be for the public consumption but this time we are having a chat uh, which is for the public and uh, i hope uh, uh, even everyone will be benefited with your uh, experience in music field and your uh, interpretation of music field uh, everything so thank you once again and uh, uh, yeah please let let's hope uh, yes uh, it will uh, whatever uh, i have learned and would like to share with all of you would certainly um, uh, help you in understanding music better or maybe uh, you know uh, the audience may feel that uh, they can share some thoughts uh, which i need to contemplate on so it's a, it's a give and take always i feel uh, when uh, even in the process of music making or uh, such platforms where we want to share ideas so i am really thankful to you for initiating this because i i think uh, in these uh, times i think this is something which will uh, give us solace and uh, great positivity uh, thinking about the fraternity and the community uh, as a whole is very important during this time so thank you again for this great initiative my pleasure my pleasure 
So to begin with, uh, Sudhir, I know that uh, uh, your mother is a singer. So uh, how did it started it in your place? I mean, how did you start the musical journey? Uh, well, yes, my mother had a good voice and uh, my father, in fact, was the person who initiated this uh, journey uh, because uh, although my mother had, had a good voice, she used to sing uh, some of the bhajans uh, uh, or the uh, devotional uh, pieces that were popular in uh, Karnataka because uh, they hail from uh, coastal Karnataka, as you know, uh, in the Udpi district of Karnataka. So there, there was a system wherein you had to sing bhajans before your uh, deity at home and only then were you allowed to consume your dinner. So it uh, became sort of a ritual and fortunately my grandfather, my maternal grandfather and my mother and uh, her siblings also uh, had good voices. Uh, but my mother was the one who was initiated uh, by my father to get trained in uh, music. And uh, she initially trained from uh, Pramila Datar for some time in Dadar. Then, we, uh, because my father was a banker and had a transferable job, we went to the uh, to, to UP, uh, wherein we had no connection of music as such, and the only voice that I heard was of my, of my mother. But then, uh, in, in 80s, we came back to Mumbai. And uh, around 83, when like uh, I was 11 years old and my younger brother Satish was like uh, uh, nine and a half, uh, my father thought we all should learn music together. So uh, he had that dream of having my mother sing and uh, the two of us accompanying uh, her on the harmonium and the tabla respectively. Uh, but initially, both of us uh, uh, were learning tabla from Pandit Madhukar Samant of Goregaon. Oh. Uh, yeah. And uh, that was the place where I got exposed to a lot of uh, sounds, which I think is very important today. I feel um, uh, um, when I uh, revisit my past, yes, uh, because I was exposed to the sound of the sitar, the uh, harmonium, the tabla, the mandolin, and a lot of other sounds, because uh, Madhukar used to play all these instruments so well. And he also used to compose uh, music for a few films and uh, very, very talented uh, uh, teacher but like a retired uh, music teacher and uh, his only uh, engagement was teaching music to students. But gradually in this uh, journey, my father who was very much interested in Marathi theatre, especially the Natya Sangeet that was popular in those days, uh, actually uh, wanted my mother to learn Natya Sangeet, which is why uh, he asked his close colleague, Omkar Gulwadi ji, who was uh, working with him uh, in, uh, with, uh, him in uh, Kanara Bank, uh, to suggest a teacher. And uh, Gulwadi ji said, my guru, Pandit Tusidas Borkar ji, would be the best teacher to uh, teach Natya Sangeet having accompanied a lot of musicians from for several decades on the reed organ and uh, Guruji started coming to our place to teach my mother and that is when actually it all started. He used to teach Nakti Sangeet to my mother but I was fascinated uh, seeing the way he played the harmonium. I used to listen to a lot of people uh, by the time because I, we used to go to a lot of concerts and I used to hear the harmonium, but I thought certainly that this is something different. And that was the time when I was around 11 years old that I had decided that if I would become something in life, that I would become some, somewhat like my Guruji. Oh. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I, um, that was the thing, you know, when people become synonymous with an instrument, uh, you feel that you should be just like them. And that is what uh, inspired me in my uh, journey with music. And then there, was, yeah. there were a lot of other influences. Uh, it's actually, today I understand there is so much similarity in our lives, mine and yours. Because my mother also used to sing bhajans prior to marriage. And it was my father who initiated her to 
learn classical music. And uh, my father used to work in a bank, so your father used to work in a bank. And, uh, I mean, there is so much common in our life. So. Yeah, but uh, one thing that I always say um, that has not been common. I mean, common in some ways because uh, uh, my father was dealing in currency notes. And I uh, deal in music, no, musical notes. So, so that's the yeah. only difference that we have. I don't <laughs> find that <laughs> notes aspect is certainly common. Correct, correct, correct. So, at, the, at what age did you join uh, Urkar Guruji? Uh, well, I, I actually did not start learning from him. I was just inspired by him, and he taught because my father insisted that, uh, uh, and he, my father saw that I was very much drawn to the harmonium. So he insisted Guruji that uh, he should teach me harmonium. I mean, I was uh, very embarrassed then because I, I could not just imagine because I, uh, fortunately, I could uh, gauge the the, um, the quality of music that he uh, uh, did. I mean, he, he performed, uh, which is why I was really embarrassed when my father said, he, "Why don't you teach him uh, <laughs> harmonium?" But then he taught me just two alankars, but that, those were enough for us for me. Uh, but uh, my father and all of us, in fact, all our family members used to go to a lot of concerts. Then. So the listening process was on, which was very beneficial to me. In fact, that uh, led me to continue my uh, music, uh, my passion in music. So although I was drawn towards music, uh, the actual teaching part came much later. So uh, like my father had uh, bought a gramophone record which had uh, along with it came a free uh, gramophone record of Bismillah uh, uh, Khasa oh. and there was Rageshri and a Dhun in it and I used to try to play these things on the harmonium oh. and try to gauge the notes and I, I think I, I had a, a inclination of uh, listening to the notes and picking those notes up uh, I won't say Swarajnan because it's a uh, uh, big uh, uh, word and I, I mean now I realize how big that word is although we, we used to use that uh, fleetingly uh, and loosely but, but now I understand Jnan is something that is really, yeah. um, I mean uh, the more we ex try to explore Swars we understand that it's uh, all the more uh, deeper. Uh, but then, yes, uh, I, I could uh, recognize Swars, which was a, a quality that I had, which is why I could have the confidence in me uh, in exploring music and uh, listening to a lot of music, which uh, really took place when uh, I was around 11. And uh, in, in 85, uh, 1985, we were tra uh, transferred to Pune. And then... Uh, it so happened that I, I felt that I am missing Guruji a lot because I could not realize the two years that he used to come to our place. I just thought that suddenly uh, this Chhatrachaya has gone and uh, I'm, I never had the courage to ask him that would you teach me. And then suddenly uh, I felt uh, such a loss in my life. But fortunately, as uh, uh, you know, you may call it uh, a Tira Icha that I had, I could see my Guruji coming to my place to play uh, with Chota Gandhar or many of the stalwarts in uh, Hindustani music uh, or even in Pune. Sorry, in Pune, yeah. And when he came to Pune, uh, he started staying at our place, which was like a blessing in disguise. And uh, that time I used to have my own notes of my observations, uh, attending so many concerts. Uh, one thing was very good that I still had the habit of uh, attending concerts. I used to cycle down to a lot of venues, Lakshmi Krina Mandir, Garwari College, or a lot of places where there used to be good music happening, or the Savai Gandhar Utsav. And I had a habit of writing my own notes, my observations, uh, which actually helped me uh, in, uh, so to say, you know, study music in my own way. And then, Whatever difficulties I had, I had to, you know, uh, jot those down and ask when Guruji used to come uh, to our place. So I don't know how much I bothered him, but I, I just had that uh, inquisitiveness of knowing what it is like. 
but uh, I started asking questions and things like that. And then uh, one thing that happened, uh, which actually uh, gave a completely different perspective to my life, I started learning from Guruji. But oh. in '88, uh, I happened to listen to a concert of Pandit Jitendra Abhishek. Abhishek Bua. Uh, at Khajinavi uh, near uh, SP College and that the one concert and a couple of concerts that I heard of him actually uh, draw uh, completely you know uh, transform my life like I was very much drawn to uh, Abhishek Ji's music uh, the the, um, the sukoon that he had the, the somber quality that his music had uh, somehow it touched my soul and I thought I should uh, and I heard a lot about the Guru Shishya tradition that was uh, being imparted and uh, the reason he had shifted to Pune. Uh, uh, in fact, this reason was to groom disciples. And I was very much, uh, you know, attracted to seeing this Guru Shishya Parampara because I had not uh, actually learned in that Parampara. So I just, uh, it was a very different relationship I shared with Borkar Guruji. So uh, I went to Abhishek Ji's place, uh, again initiated my, by my father, uh, just to know how the uh, Guru Shishya Parampara uh, goes on. Because I would not have had the courage or mustered the courage to ask uh, uh, to be his disciple. But then uh, somehow things changed and uh, Abhishek Ji uh, had gone to, to Delhi to get the Padma Sri award, I remember. But uh, it so happened that within, uh, uh, I think, three or four months, um, it so happened that his regular accompanists who were uh, uh, Subhash Kamat and Kanereji, Vishwanath Kanereji, uh, were not able to play a concert which had come uh, in, in, a, you know, um, uh, in a couple of days and he was not able to arrange for the accompanists and his regular uh, accompanists were not available. This was in Ramakrishnamat, Pune. So, uh, he asked whether I would be uh, uh, comfortable accompanying him. And I said, uh, it's not possible. I mean, <laughs> people would have certainly jumped on this opportunity, but I would realize that it was not possible for me to accompany a stalwart. But suddenly, he might have seen something in me. And I was going to Abhishekiji almost every day. Uh, so he must have seen something in me and he said, uh, Shavanath will explain what I am going to uh, sing. So uh, don't worry about that. Uh, in Konkani he said, Surat Surdi, Magir Baki Hau Padeta. So that oh. means, uh, you just uh, give Sur ko Sur de ho, Baki yeah. Sarmai Dekh Lunga. Okay. Uh, so it was a great opportunity, Bharat Kamat and I. Oh. Uh, for, for us, uh, Abhishek Ji was the first stalwart that we played with. And uh, then, of course, I continued playing with him for uh, 10 years and uh, I learned a lot from him. So, the intricacies of Prag Sangeet and a lot of things, right from his compositions and uh, uh, um, other, uh, I used to assist him when he used to compose music. So, a lot of things and different experiences. So, uh, this is basically the journey which is uh, inspired by Borkar Guruji and Abhishek Ji together. But was it, was it simultaneous? Like, uh, uh, it was simultaneous. Yes, it was simultaneous. But let me tell you one thing. Uh, when in 1991, I went to the US with Abhishek Ji for concerts for around uh, three and a half months. Mangesh Mode, um, Shonak and I, uh, the three of us accompanied him. There were a lot of concerts, around 35 concerts uh, to be precise. And that was a great experience. But after I returned from... Uh, this US tour, I felt that yes, uh, playing the harmonium, the technical part of it is something I need to master because because Abhishek Ji's music was so great that I always felt that I was incomplete. In, although he uh, considered me as an accompanist and a student, I always felt the incompleteness in my accompaniment, which, was, which is why I started commuting between Mumbai and Pune. I went to Borkar Guruji again and he said, yes, I'll teach you. Uh, and uh, he started some advanced drafts. Then I said, uh, no, I want to go back to the basics. Because if I don't visit the basics, I won't be able to uh, teach students and I won't be able to learn myself on how to explore the basics in any art. 
So then we started from Saregama again, which was like an eye opener for me. And then Raj Yaman and uh, so on. And uh, that is that is why it was simultaneous, but still, like so I was uh, uh, doing uh, kind of on the job training. You know, it was like that. Okay. Uh, uh, was uh, I mean when you learned from? Uh, uh, was it a one-to-one learning when you went to Abhishek Bua? Yes, uh, uh, with Borkarji it was a one-to-one learning. Sometimes, of course, his other disciples used to be there, but I used to uh, observe him teaching other uh, disciples also. But as uh, 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 Abhishek Ji is concerned, um, in fact, a lot of other students would be together. In fact, I would be just uh, listening to those compositions being taught. I would try to memorize those compositions and even uh, uh, write it down. And that is why, uh, you know, I developed uh, uh, an interest in the lyrical part of the Bandish also. So it was not only the rag structure that we were learning, I was also fascinated uh, about the lyrics and Abhisheki Ji being a uh, Pandit himself, like he was very well versed with the Sahitya also. Uh, which is why I was also drawn to the Sahitya and I used to maintain his library uh, and read books whenever uh, our talim uh, got completed. I mean, uh, I used to go there around 4 o'clock in the evening after my college. And uh, from 4 till uh, 7, we used to have this talim for uh, like 2 and a half hours to 3 hours. Sometimes even before uh, the talim started, uh, when Abhishek Ji did, uh, did his 3 hours, I used to accompany him on the tabla. Oh. And uh, I used to uh, be a part of the Riyadh also. For about an hour, he used to practice from 2.30 to 3.30. And from 3.30 or 4, students used to come. And then I used to have that tali. And it was like the whole day uh, I used to be in music. And sometimes I used to bunk college uh, just to come to Abhishek Ji's place. So I would be there for the morning sessions also. And that was one place where uh, I could experience what a Gurukul could be. So, so it was a great experience and I used to go there almost every day and then so of course uh, accompany him in different projects. So you got a good experience by listening to him, like you know accompanying him on the tabla or you know accompanying him on the concerts, uh, for, on the harmonium for the concerts. Yeah. So I think that uh, made a lot of impact, you know, like uh, the knowledge also must have been improved at that time. Rather than one-to-one teaching, that must have, you know, his the sahavas, what we call. Yeah, uh, sahavas and also a teaching experience because sometimes you never knew what rag you would be singing. Oh, yeah. So, so, so we just had the first five notes, uh, first five minutes rather of the concert would be, uh, I would be engaged and focused in trying to gauge what rag he is trying to sing. And then uh, it, sometimes there, there were achok or prachalit rags. Uh, the rare rags. So, so um, I would try to gauge the structure of the rag and then continue that uh, uh, aspect in following the whole concert. So, uh, it was always a revelation and I got to learn a lot of uh, things from him. And uh, every concert was an experience. The discipline that he followed uh, from every note, the sensitivity that he had while performing. He was listening to every aspect of the music that, uh, or the musicians that were accompanying him, right from the Tanpura. Even if one string would go wrong, he would be so sensitive enough to um, um, just take the Tanpura and retune it, or uh, the tuning of the tabla, or uh, even the tanpura, harmonium, like, you know, um, he used to uh, tell the harmonium player to accompany him very, very closely, as if the harmonium player would be expected to go along with him. It was very difficult, but uh, nevertheless, uh, over the years, I um, gradually managed to uh, get a hold of it. But it was uh, nevertheless very difficult because uh, uh, accompanying a stalwart and a creative stalwart like him, who would always come out with new ideas, was uh, kind of very difficult. I had never felt in my life that I actually accompanied him. But I certainly uh, always was in a in the a role of a student and I, I, I always try to explore whatever I could uh, when I accompanied him in concerts. Uh, we normally hear that uh, the earlier generation gurus 
uh, were very strict. Uh, you know, uh, they were like, you know, uh, I mean, methodical while teaching also. So, uh, did you, uh, did you, do you, do you still feel or uh, you had a feeling that they were very strict with you or, you know, uh, how, how, how was the relationship between you and uh, Borkar Guruji as well as uh, Abhishek Ibuwa? Uh, both had uh, many things in common, Borkar Ji or Abhishek Ji. First of all, their first thing that I felt and I always see was their honesty in looking yeah. at uh, music. And that was what always inspired me. And their passion for learning. Both were very good composers. Abhishek Ji, of course, had a great uh, uh, yes. acknowledgement in the um, uh, field as a composer. Guruji also had composed a lot of uh, pieces. Uh, he had also given um, uh, composed music for uh, theater, Marathi theater. Uh, he was an organ player. Uh, but as a teacher, as a guru, I think both of them were really stalwarts. Which is why I can now see the number of guru bhais that I have. Um, uh, even uh, Guruji's, uh, Borkar Guruji's disciples and Abhishekiji's disciples. So even if you talk about, because they were uh, trained performers, they, they um, grew into performers, they, they, they uh, impart the knowledge to a lot of students even today and uh, they have tried to follow what their gurus did. So, so I am no exception, I, I try to uh, gauge a lo lot from, uh, I mean I try to learn a lot from what they taught me. I don't think I had the quality to uh, to get as much as I could during that time. I mean, uh, now in re retrospect, when I see, uh, I feel I could have learned much more. But uh, and these people were like, you know, they had no restriction in uh, giving away uh, the vidya to the, uh, their students. So, so both had that quality. They would not keep anything for themselves. That generosity uh, in them was one quality I really admire even today. Um, I try to uh, match those standards but I know it's so difficult. Uh, yes, both of them were quite strict and uh, uh, like they wanted a particular thing to be done in a particular way. Guruji uh, never used to scold us, Borkar Guruji. Uh, he would not be that vocal when he uh, found a student not up to the mark. But uh, nevertheless, whenever he would just express his displeasure, we could know that no, we are not doing correct. So it was like that. Whereas Abhishek Ji was quite vocal. He used to say that no, this is wrong. And uh, sometimes on stage you, you could get all the abuses. <laughs> so, so it was like that. So both yes. had uh, different perspectives of interaction uh, with, the, with their students. Nevertheless, both were great in their own way. And I am really benefited and really privileged and blessed to have such great gurus in my life. Uh, obviously, I mean, uh, uh, their... Uh, their uh, what, what you call as parampara of both your gurus is so I mean so vast I mean the, the, the disciples and now grand disciples uh, most of them are doing extremely well uh, in the music field uh, now I'll come little bit come to uh, accompaniment of harmonium as well as your solo part uh, when you uh, accompany any artist, any art, you have accompanied almost all uh, people from you know the senior most to the uh, very youngsters also you have accompanied. When you when you accompany uh, anybody, is it the visual? Uh, I mean, what an artist visualizes that you are following, or what you know which you which you try to play. Uh, in fact, as an accompanist, we have to go through different mindsets when uh, we are in a concert. First of all, uh, like it's called Sat Sangat. That's the word we use for accompaniment. So going with the singer uh, is something that is very important. 
following him closely is very important. But to do that, yes, uh, to be well versed in the tradition is something that you need to uh, really imbibe in yourself. Uh, a particular singer may have learned the gaiki of a couple of gharanas, but for us we have to um, know the gaiki of almost all the gharanas that are existent. You have to know the traits, the traits, the styles, the techniques that are employed. At the same time, going beyond gharanas, the individuality, the individual perspective that a particular vocalist has, has to be, uh, you know, internalized by the accompanist. And so, uh, it does not happen only on stage. Even when we even when we uh, speak to each other, we interact with each other, even off stage, like when we are traveling, uh, when we are listening to some music, their views, their expressions need to be noted by the accompanist. And that is why not only knowing the gharana or the style in which the singer sings or the individual, uh, individual, individual stylistic technique that any singer has, but going beyond that to know the soul of the singer is very important when you accompany. It is, uh, uh, as you said, you know, um, I may have learned a particular rag in a particular way. Correct. But That's when what comes from, yeah. Yes. yes. So, so, so like, uh, uh, for example, I'm, uh, I have learned Jai Jai in one nang, Desang or Soratan. <laughs> And the singer is trying to sing it in the Bhagishriyam. So you may or may not know it. But then trying to explore the soul of the singer and the way he tries to um, um, embellish the whole rag. The way. Jana ana isko That is very important for a, a harmonium player or any other um, accompanist like a saragi player or a violin player to know. It's very important to know the way the uh, vocalist tries to improvise the way he looks at rag structures, the way he looks at the whole musical uh, effect that is being created. And becoming one with that is, I think, the role of an accompanist. And I have tried to follow that as much as possible. I won't claim that I have always been successful. Certainly not. Because uh, every time is a learning experience, and even now, uh, till the last concert that I played before the lockdown, uh, I always felt that I could have done better. Nevertheless, I won't say that I am not satisfied with my playing, but I, I certainly have that urge of becoming better in knowing another personality. Bhargav Guruji always used to say, uh, when you accompany, Keep this uh, in mind. Pani tera rang kaisa. To jisse mil jaye vaisa. So you have to become one with that uh, personality, that soul. So it's not only about the grammar, the technique and the musical perspective that the vocalist has. But actually reaching out to his soul and knowing what space he would be comfortable in. And what space uh, he or she would be comfortable in giving to the accompanist because knowing that space is very important Correct. especially when you uh, play in the space you try to uh, give Correct. your inputs in the space it's important to know where to stop more than how to play so it's not about what you can play but joining in that whole process for example when when a particular vocalist is singing a particular rag like Bhagishri or Yaman or whatever I need to be part of that Yaman too and not only of the Gayaki that the singer is saying. I have to try to explore Yaman my own way. Individuality is also, individual expression is also as important as the expression that the vocalist is conveying. So, uh, but yes, how to negotiate with this is something that uh, all depends on the personalities of the singer. One thing also is very important is uh, is actually gauging the psychology of the singer. 
because some people uh, some people uh, when they sing they have very little space for the accompanist to give their input Correct. some people uh, have a lot of uh, i mean give a lot of uh, lot of space for you to embellish your ideas yes. they ac actually respect your inputs and i think uh, we, i can't comment on which is right and which is wrong but certainly you have to be open to accepting the ideas of your co musicians which is what makes it a teamwork right and uh, this is what i feel uh, is very important while making music the inputs your of your accompanying musicians go a long way in doing that so i have tried to be a part of it without being sounding arrogant when i play uh, or uh, give my inputs which is very important when you are accompany and one more thing i wanted to ask you was that when you perform a solo you have an idea maybe since the morning of that day you might have an idea that what you should play and uh, how it should I mean uh, what is the duration so you have an idea of it but when you accompany especially for harmonium artists you have to accompany different styles of singing like gharanas where you are accompanying and also there might be a time where an uh, artist sing a rag which is very aprachali I mean, even you might have not heard i mean i know you have accompanied so many people you might have known lots of ragas but there are again so many ragas which are you know completely uh, aprachali i can recent our may we both attended one concert of subhaji when she sang reva you know it was completely like uh, i mean i i remember you saying to that even i for me also this is the first time so how that time how your uh, uh how your imagination works or you just follow her and what she is singing and trying to understand the rag because suddenly she will come and tell or any artist on the in the green room they will tell so you might be not knowing that rag so at that time what is your uh, way of playing with the uh, rag uh that's an experience i think many of us have to uh, have taken and it's really very difficult in those times but nevertheless i feel the blessings of our gurus and the the tradition in which we have learned which is a very open tradition helps us in uh unrevealing these uh, uh expressions i mean we, we don't know what uh, kind of a rag is being sung उसका जाना आना नहीं मालूम बट स्टिल वॉट वी ट्राई इज टू अप्लाई आवर माइंड इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग देर योर एटीट्यूड ऑफ बींग अ स्टूडेंट एंड अ सीकर सर्टनली हेल्प एंड इफ यू आर रेडी टू लर्न इट यू सिट देर एज अ स्टूडेंट हु नोज नथिंग बट ऑफकोर्स अनदर आस्पेक्ट दैट हेल्प यू इज योर लिस्निंग एक्सपीरियंस योर एक्सपीरियंस एज अ लिस्नर when you listen to a particular piece of music or whatever you know you listen to uh, in your life if you are open to listening to it and if you are a very concentrated listener then certainly that helps you while accompanying uh, uh, these new uh, aprachali tracks that you are accompanying so so you try to gauge the structure basically first and then follow the notes of the singer and when you are given a space to say your thing you don't go out of the way in exploring your ideas but just follow the basic outline that the singer has sung this is why uh, which is where you are you are playing quite safe okay. uh, during that time otherwise uh, i may or any other accompanist may think of embellishing that particular uh, rag in their own way uh, getting out their own ideas but we try to play safe during that time at the same time if you feel that you have gauged that structure to a considerable extent then slowly within that um, rag the duration of the rag that the singer is singing we certainly gain confidence to express ourselves and our ideas in that rag so this has happened and it's it's an experience by itself so you can't ever say uh, here one thing that also helps a quality that every accompanist should have is of uh, 
anticipating what is coming. So that uh, aspect of anticipation certainly helps you to gauge these rafts and the structures better. Of course, the references that we have from other rafts and the elaboration of uh, process of other rafts also gives a, uh, an idea of where the rag would go, the chalan of the rag. But uh, still, being very, very alert in this respect is something that an accompanist needs to do without being terrified. So it's important for him to maintain his composure at the time being very, very alert and listening to every aspect that is being sung. It's not only about the rag, but the tar also in which it's sung. Because a uh, vocalist might have rehearsed it so many times and we have to uh, know the mukhda just at that juncture and pro uh, in the hour then you have to come to the mukhda uh, playing all our ideas which is not so easy although people may feel that it, it's, a, it's a matter of habit and, he, and there are some people who uh, vocalists who also look at the harmonium players uh, yes. feeling that they, are, they, are, they could not play the mukhda yes. but it is yes. something that is very difficult because um, uh, you may have practiced it, uh, many years and uh, in an instant the vocalist or uh, the accompanist is expected to reproduce those ideas and play it in that time cycle or the tal structure which is not so easy. So, okay. so there your talim certainly helps but your presence of mind certainly contributes to it. Right. So this is the precisely why I have started doing this. Uh, because this conversation, because as I said in the beginning, we normally come and sit in a three hour concert or a five hour concert or a four hour concert. Just we come, listen and then go, telling oh, kitna acha tha. But the, what happens behind the scenes? Because for every artist, every concert is a new experience. You know, you are exactly. accompanying, whether it is your own uh, solo concert or you are accompanying someone. Right. It creates a, you know, uh, every every concert becomes an experience. You learn so many things from there. But people will not know, the audience will not know what has been exactly. through so behind. Uh, and that's the quality of the performer. That the audience should only uh, uh, get a taste of what is being presented. Correct. And not know about the technicality. And that, that's right. the quality of a performer, not uh, allowing them to know. Or even for an accompanist, not allowing the vocalist also to know that you are not comfortable playing this. Yes. Yeah. Because I become nervous as an accompanist, certainly it would impact the overall performance of the vocalist. So, so he or she never, um, uh, doesn't matter how much confident they are, uh, he or she is, uh, they will rely on the accompanist's support to convey their music. So it's important for us to support them first and, uh, uh, you know, muster their, uh, um, um, uh, I mean, uh, boost their confidence uh, while uh, performing. Because there are, there are so many challenges when uh, we perform in different areas. Like if you are paying tribute to some um, um, stalwart in music, there may be a lot of uh, buzurs or stalwarts sitting in the audience where this confidence is very much needed, uh, not only in the vocalist but in the team. So, so which is where the teamwork and the confidence that we gain uh, by interacting with each other and being comfortable with each other is very important. And uh, uh, I've been uh, observing you since last 20-25 years. We have been friends. Uh, you have a very uh, a very larger outlook towards music. It's not just Hindustani music. I would say larger outlook towards the arts as a whole. Uh, you have, uh, in fact, an organization called Kala Coast, uh, and also you have an organization called Village Music Club the Art. Uh, in these both of these organizations, I have seen uh, you conducting cons programs not just of Hindustani classical music, but of various genres like genres. Like, you know, uh, you had, sometimes you had uh, your, uh, 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 what was his name, I'm not sure. Lok Sangeet. Lok Sangeet you had, folk music you had, and you had many, uh, you know, one-to-one -one sessions. And especially in Kalakosti, you had, have a series called as Impact Series, 
where you you know different storytelling, then you know uh, acting also sometimes dramatics. How do you think all this helps a musician or any per any person to develop his art? In fact, uh, I would like to acknowledge first of all my gurus uh, who inspired and instilled this uh, expression in me to look at different art forms because uh, Abhishek ji or Borkar ji both had worked in different fields and they were always open to looking at different fields. I would also like to uh, acknowledge the uh, long association that I have had with uh, and have with uh, Shubha Mudgal ji and Anish Pradhan ji. Uh, who also instilled this in me because uh, looking at diversity was something that uh, uh, we all uh, you know uh, were looking forward to uh, and uh, there was a lot of projects which we in which we worked together and I could uh, have this uh, uh, I, I started slowly getting this in me of uh, uh, looking at not only Hindustani music although I had heard a lot of forms before and uh, kept on listening to it but practically listening to different forms was something that started much later and looking at different art forms like for example painting Abhishek you would, would always say uh, you should be able to appreciate good painting also good theatre I mean you should be able to uh, appreciate theatre or painting or fine arts any form of dance and uh, if you are a true musician, you will be able to do that. But we uh, actually live or study in watertight compartments. Even within the Hindustani music genre, you, you restrict yourself to a particular gharana. And then I feel, feel and I always felt that we lose on a lot of expressions that are conveyed through different art forms. So let's, let's say when I started looking at theatre, I was very much interested in theatre uh, from my childhood. So, so uh, I used to attend a lot of uh, dramas and I started, increasingly I started uh, um, attending a lot more. Even today I do, uh, uh, I attend a lot of uh, theatrical productions. Uh, I listen to Carnatic music, I listen to Western music, jazz. I may not understand those forms, but it's never uh, something that should be listen to only if you understand a particular thing. So the listening experience is something that is beyond comprehension because uh, music or the arts have languages of their own and these languages need to be understood. Another thing that I always felt was when I used to interact uh, with my fellow musicians they would always say oh okay Carnatic music okay yeah, there is no improvisation in it. Uh, if you talk to them about Western music, they would say, oh again, that is a very pre-composed structure and it's structured music and you read music. So I used to somehow feel very bad about this. I, I, I felt, yeah, you know, because unless I know at least one kriti of Carnatic music, I can't be judgmental about the whole form. Right. So unless you try to listen and have access to this form, then uh, certainly you won't grow not only as a musician but as a human being. So it's important for you to have that diverse eclectic approach in arts to grow. And as you said, Kala Coast was one forum. It is one forum which actually makes me real realize that all the more. Because when we have sessions uh, at impact, uh, I mean, there is a lot of people who join us every time for these sessions. But uh, I can say this for myself, that when I'm listening to, for example, uh, a person who, who talks about film appreciation, a person who talks about uh, an art form like Yakshagan, a person who talks about a folk fusion category, a person who talks about storytelling, about theatre, about, um, uh, you know, cuisine, the, the, the myths of food and cuisine and these are subjects that I would have never imagined that someone would speak about it and uh, in fact give us insight in these subjects and it is so important for you to be open to learning more 
and well, I can say this for myself that I have never restricted myself to one particular uh, form of music. Although I always consider uh, Hindustani music as my mother tongue to understand different languages. So these are different languages, these are these different express, uh, expressions, these are different experiences that you uh, take with you and you try to get in your journey as a musician. And I'm sure, at least I, I can say for myself that I am very, very much enriched taking these expressions. It's not always possible to actually translate these expressions into my music. Nevertheless, even for example, when you look at nature, there's so many, you, you can just uh, be with nature uh, and uh, see what it, how it expresses itself from the morning, from dawn to dusk. And it's such a beauty. And even those expressions, even though you experience that, it does not directly translate into your music, but certainly in the subconscious, uh, it creates an effect which certainly affects your uh, music making process and the way you convey your expressions to the audience. No, this, is a, this is a precisely why I wanted you to answer this question because it will help uh, many of the youngsters. Even I have been helped uh, to a greater extent by, you know, with an association with you. Uh, because uh, many things I have learned just by observing many artists and including you also, like, you know, how you said that taking, appreciating all the things, all the good things is a, you know, kind of developing one's self, uh, personality, one's personality. So that's why I wanted you to answer this. Uh, the next question, uh, because we have only now another eight minutes uh, time because uh, Instagram already shuts down after one hour. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I'm not very, very much with that technology. Even I am not. I'm not. Actually, yeah. I want to thank uh, Tejo Rish for helping me out in this. Uh, oh, great. Uh, yeah, he helped me with uh, Instagram, uh, all the details of how to conduct an interview. Uh, how important to have regular companies? Or is there any drawback you feel? Uh, in fact, it's very important to be comfortable in a concert that your comfort level is more important for that I, I mean just like you have a family and it's important uh, because the way your family understands you uh, an outsider may not understand so so it's like you become a family with whoever you accompany with so it's not only about the music that you share it, it's, it's about sharing even otherwise, even when you are traveling, you uh, share anecdotes, you share what you like about music, you ha you agree to disagree, you, you, you share a lot of expressions and that is what contributes to the music making process when we are working as a team. So, I think having regular accompanies certainly helps you articulate your music or convey your music to the best of its ability. But... Uh, it's sometimes not practically possible to have your regular uh, accompaniment because they also may be busy in uh, a lot of other concerts, which is, which is when you need to negotiate with other accompanists. But again, if you have an open attitude as a human being, I think uh, certainly that does not matter. But at the same time, it's important for every artist to respect the other artist's perspective. We uh, sometimes see concerts or music making process not working out only because of this aspect. Because you feel that there is a kind of a disrespect in each other and somewhere you are working in disharmony which actually is a very bad thing for music making or for that matter anything that is worked in unison. There may be some, uh, you, you can say, drawbacks with a particular accompanist. But first of all, if you have the chance to get good accompanists and your regular accompanists, that's the best thing that you can that can happen. But otherwise, you choose someone who can be all equally good 
or if not equally good, how to be compatible, how to conform with his or her expressions. It's something that we have to be trained. So the vocalist has to be trained too. Or, the, um, or even for the accompanist, it's also important to have a regular uh, person who he accompanies. Because uh, it's also the relationship that we develop over the years which helps us to perform or convey our expressions uh, to the audience. Uh, one last question. Uh, many, uh, in fact, we are uh, very happy that many of the artists have joined us today. Shubhaji, uh, Shubhaji, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Shubhaji. Katoti ji and Bharat Kamat ji. All oh, thanks, Bharat. Thanks, Ravindra. Uh, so many artists have. Uh, I, I might have left some names. Sorry for that. Uh, one last question is: uh, Many of the uh, vocalists nowadays prefer sarangi and harmonium together uh, as an accompaniment. Uh, what What are your thoughts about it? It's uh, not a problem if the sarangi player and the harmonium player have worked for some time together. That is also very important. See, when we look at accompaniment, it's not only the main vocalist with the accompanist. The communication is not only with them, but within the accompanist, the communication is also equally important. Many a times, it so happens that uh, when there is a sarangi player and a harmonium player, both of them may suddenly start improvising on the music that is happening. Or uh, it may be a sense of uh, you know showing what we can play. And that certainly creates a problem in concerts. So there is uh, not a problem if the accompanists certainly know and are aware of what they should be doing uh, to take the music ahead. And it's not about what we can do and what we can show uh, and uh, display, uh, but to keep the main vocalist very, very comfortable is the first intention of any company, or rather should be the first intention of any company. So, uh, we should certainly, uh, like when I'm, I am playing the harmonium, if there is a Sayangi player, I would certainly not try to overshadow his playing or uh, uh, rather the other way around should also not happen. Uh, but at the same time, we can try to complement each other yeah. while playing which again creates a very different perspective, gives a very different perspective to the music making process. And certainly the audiences are delighted and I have actually been a part of this and I certainly uh, respect the Sarangi players' uh, contribution to the music and I respect it as an instrument, I love that instrument. And so I should be also constantly thinking about what, how that can create a different dimension to the music that is being rendered. That consciousness is very important for a harmonium player or a sarangi player when they are playing together. Uh, Sudhir, I think the time is almost up now. Uh, actually, I mean, we can go on, go on talking. I mean, we have been uh, talking for so many days. Uh, <laughs> I think that's it. I think talking is the only thing we can do in this lockdown. <laughs> you know, they're not, uh, we are not performing at all. Yeah, so I yeah. think that's the only I, thing I, I do. I in fact wanted to, you know, uh, had many questions in fact written, but I couldn't uh, 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 take up a few of them. It's okay that next that's time, fine. if there is a uh, one more chance. In fact, few people had asked for your uh, small piece, but I don't think so. It's possible now. Uh, play or something but uh, since the time is almost up yeah I, th I thank you once again for helping me to start this uh, you know uh, and you have always been a inspiration guide for me uh, since uh, many years now and I thank all my uh, all our friends who have joined us all the artists who have taken time to uh, you know uh, who have taken time to watch us so thank you very much Sudhir and thank you all of you and uh, I will definitely come up with a new session next week. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dhananjay. Thanks. It was a great experience. And thanks uh, to all of you for uh, joining this session. And I look forward to the other sessions too. Thank you. Thank you.